The basic premise is the fact that the Earth is not out there in the remote recesses of space alone by itself where nobody cares about it, nobody knows about it. We are actually in a special place and we're very significant because of that. Uh, the fact that the Earth might be in a centralized location of the universe, for someone who doesn't believe in God, that might be very uncomfortable because that doesn't happen by chance. Someone had to put it there. So that's the basic theme of the movie. And, and the idea is that uh, Copernicus, uh, he was the first one who said that the Earth is not in the center of things and that everything goes around it. And so this idea, the Copernican, is that how you pronounce it, the Copernican principle? Right. Okay. That became sort of the basis for all of modern science, right? Can you tell us why that principle is important and how what science has now found um, may disprove it? The Copernican principle basically is the foundation of modernity from 600 years ago with Copernicus. The idea that we, the Earth, or we humans, are nothing special, we're just a cosmic accident. Because if you're not in the center, and you're out there somewhere where nobody has any signposts, this is where you are, uh, then that uh, breeds a kind of atheistic view of the cosmos, you know, just time and chance got us here. And uh, so the Copernican principle is the mainstay of modern science today because it's basically atheistic in a lot of ways. So uh, putting us back in the center changes things. And, and what's this thing about the fact that the background radiation that formed at the very beginning, the Big Bang era or whatever, um, uh, how that stuff, what, what has been seen in these satellites of the last few years that sort of finally proves that yes indeed things are the, the, the solar system is in the middle of all of, of this universe, the, the, the seeable universe. Yeah, well they sent up a probe. Well, well first of all, in 1978 they had a hint that the, this radiation, cosmic microwave background radiation, wasn't smooth, that there were bumps in it. And, but they didn't really know what these bumps meant. And by bumps I mean temperature changes in this, it's at 2.75 degree Kelvin, and it might be a little higher here and a lower there in, in parts of the universe. So they sent up this probe in 1990 called the COBE probe, and it came back and it showed that the Earth was aligned by the Earth's equator and the ecliptic between the Sun and the Earth with this cosmic radiation. Now that's significant because the universe is 93 billion light years in diameter, and our little Earth is, what, 93 million miles from the Sun, and yet the whole universe is aligned with the Earth. So they found that in 1990. Then in 2001, they couldn't believe their eyes, so they sent up another probe to check on the first one, uh -huh. and they found the same evidence. Mm -hmm. Then in 2009, they couldn't believe the first two, so they <laughs> sent up another one. This time, the European Space Agency got involved with NASA, and they just got the results back in 2013, and lo and behold, the same thing. So it's like two, three strikes, you're out. You know, it's, this is scientific evidence now. And, and there's this axis? Can you explain how the axis fits into all of this? Is yeah. This is like an axis that's going all the way through the, uni the, the, the seeable universe? Well, it shows that the Earth is significant because it's the hub of the universe. If all of the radiation, which comes from everywhere in the universe, there's no place we don't see it, and it's all coming toward us and aligned with us like this, you know, on a 23 and a half degree tilt and with our equator, the Earth is like a little pea compared to like the Milky Way. You know, what, what is this universe doing being aligned with this little pea? Mm -hmm. But that's what they found three times in 20 years, you see. So this is astounding evidence. Now, you're getting all sorts of controversy. Scientists that are in the film that are saying, um, you know, we, we've been misquoted and all this sort of thing. Uh, what do you say to this idea that these guys didn't even know what they were, you know, that they didn't know they were going to be in a film about this subject? You no, know, well, I, I don't want to accuse them of anything. I, you know, I can see how, how oh, it would be so earth-shattering to them, because all their lives they've been saying that we're insignificant, we're just out there, we're nothing, and all of a sudden their, their, their very telescopes show them something just the opposite. So how would you react? And, and, and so your defense mechanisms come up, you know, and, uh, and so I understand the dilemma that they're in, but scientific evidence is scientific evidence. It's there, and they have to deal with it. Well, Bob, tell me about these, the, the thing that you found with the galaxies. Well, uh, in 2005, uh, they had turned their telescopes to the universe, and they wanted to take a sort of a grand survey of all the galaxies. Uh, it was called the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, 2005. As far out as we could see in the universe, 
the galaxies were aligned in concentric spheres around, guess what, Earth, <laughs> or our galaxy. Let's just put it that way. So, but we're in the galaxy, so it, it means, you know, all these galaxies are separated by 250 million light years, and then there's an, you go another 250 million light years, and there's another concentric sphere, and then another 250, there's another, so there's seven all together that, that we can see. Okay, so again, this puts us right in the center of things. They have never seen this before. <laughs> Son Jennison talked about one of his favorite parts of the principle, where scientist Max Togmark sees his work proved, showing the universe's cosmic radiation aligning with the Earth in substantial ways. He said he was struggling between his gut and his brain. His gut didn't like what he saw because it put the Earth in a significant place and made human beings significant. But he says, I have to override my gut with my brain, and I have to face this data for what it says objectively, you see. So that's a very dramatic moment in the movie. Interesting. Yeah, and, and I, I love that part of it. Um, you know, just an aside, uh, as I was watching it, I was thinking, well, if you're an atheist, you could still be an atheist with this data. You could still say, well, it just so happens that the Earth is in the center. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know why it has to shake up these atheist scientists so much that we would be in the center. Then, because if you're a believer in the Big Bang, you believe that there's going to be this smooth explosion that's not going to have any distinguishing features, and it's not going to have any center. So if you find a center in that big mass, well, that means somebody had to make it that way. There's a designer behind it, you see. So that's why they want to get away from the center idea. Physicist Lawrence Krauss has been the scientist most public in ripping into the documentary, writing an article in the online Slate magazine titled, I have no idea how I ended up in that stupid geocentrism documentary. And he leveled very personal charges against Sun Genis. He's accusing you of being an anti-Semite. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, so I, I went and read all that stuff and all this. And uh, in, indeed, do you have this feeling like that the Holocaust never happened? Like, in, are, are, are you indeed the guy that some of your detractors are saying you are? No. It's been blown up so out of proportion. Mm -hmm. I, as a matter of fact, I had to make a statement, a public statement, and I made it two, sta two separate statements. I believe in the Holocaust, you know, I love the Jewish people, I'm not an anti-Semite, all this stuff. And I think some of the, some of the things that I've said as an, an apologist, uh, which has to look at the good and bad of Catholics, Jews, Protestants, Muslims, and I'm not afraid to say it. You know, I have said good and bad of all of those groups. Some have interpreted that as, well, he's anti-Semitic because he's talking bad things about, you know, what some Jewish people did. Well, I talk bad things about what Catholics do and what Protestants do and, and what Muslims do. So it doesn't mean I'm anti-Semitic, but you know how the things can, can get blown up in the sure. media, okay? So we've put that to bed because I've made two public statements and I, I just said, it's not true. None of it's true. That's okay. like a, well, I wanted to give you a chance to say that because it was you. like, uh, you know, that's because those accusations are very fresh. They're coming out right now. So, yeah. um, and um, I, I guess as a, as a guy who edits stories myself, you know, I know that you could indeed do with scientists. You could take just the stuff you wanted. W what is your feeling about scientists like Krauss saying, you know, they, they took me all out of context and everything like that. Do you, do you feel guilty of that? Or do you feel like, no, I, I, I think I represented these guys well, both pro and you know, pro and con to my views. One thing we set out to do in this movie was to be fair to our opposition. Mm -hmm. That was a abiding principle from day one four years ago. So we, we told them exactly what the movie was about. They were interviewed for four or five hours, so, so they heard the questions. Mm -hmm. So they knew what the movie was about just from the questions. Then in the uh, releases that they signed, it said, this is about the Copernican principle. Uh, critiques of the Copernican principle and alternative views of cosmology. Was, they were making these accusations without even seeing the movie because they had this preconceived idea in their mind what it was uh, about. You believe that the, the Earth indeed, everything is still revolving around the Earth and is that accurate? You do not think that the Earth goes around the Sun, you think that the Sun goes around the Earth. Yeah, is, is that now accurate? we don't cover that specifically in the principle right. because this is basically just a general understanding of cosmology. It's sort of it, it, like if somebody says, how do you get to Boston, Massachusetts? Well, you take a boat to the United States, and that's basically what the principle says. Now, if you want to find out how to get to Boston, you can ask somebody else. Okay? So, so if you want to get to the next level, yeah, there is this uh, aspect of cosmology where, yeah, the Earth might be in the center and not even moving. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, I cover that in my literature, and we're making a second movie that covers that, but that's not what the principal is covering. Right. The principal does go into it just a little bit because we tell the people that the special theory of relativity was invented because of experiments that were done in the late 1800s that showed the Earth might not be moving at all. And so they, modern science had to come up with an explanation, voila, special relativity, where everything's relative and nothing's still, everything's moving. So uh, there's a whole big story behind that, but we don't get into it in the principle. Okay. I, I just wanted to know that because I thought, um, uh, does, does it take away from your, your, your theories if indeed the Earth is going around the sun, does that, does that wipe out the idea? I was thinking myself, I think, well, if the solar system is still in the middle, that's good enough for me. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Do you know, but is it central to your ideas that the Earth be not moving and having everything go around it? Is that central to your No, Earth? no, not really. Uh, that's just another aspect of the same issue. Okay. But when you have the radiation of the whole universe aligned and you have the Earth or a galaxy, whatever you want, a solar system, whatever, in the middle of that, makes no difference whether it's the Earth, the solar system, or the galaxy. We're not out there on the outskirts of the universe. We're right in the center. So that, that counts, you see. <laughs>